Guys, I'm here with Zach and Yvette here at the CES conference, and we got our media pass. So thank you guys so much for following because we're able to get this pass free of charge because we're going to do some coverage today. So again, thanks, Zach. Thanks, Yvette. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Let me set a little bit of a stage. Um, we firmly believe that we are now in an era of quantum utility, and we are very confident that quantum advantage is in the near term. Let's go, guys. So here we got our pass, over a $1,000 value for free. Thanks so much for subscribing to the YouTube channel, guys. Makes a difference for events like this. I went up to go get the onion rings, and I was like, which one do you like better, onion rings or french fries? And he was like, onion rings, and I was like, let's do it. This one? Right here is healthy, this one, not so healthy. Okay guys, so we're in the media room and we just got in, I didn't know this was a thing, but this is what they say here, $25 retail for lunch. So thank you guys so much for following. Appreciate it. what's your name? Janet. Janet, at the media room. If you come to see us, look for her. Okay guys, so, so far we got to see the first two or three hours of the quantum computing. It was great. Got to see some optimism. I asked a question at the end and then they started standing up right in front of me and I actually just started filming it because we didn't get really concrete answers. And so I asked some questions and then they started basically answering it right in front of me where I was sitting and I filmed it. So you guys can see those answers now. The biggest thing I noticed too is that the entire world is seeing quantum computing as a massive uh, movement here this year. But every single country met, including the United Nations. Yeah. Uh, like spoken about it last year, I say, well, well, we are really working hard on it, but this is a very hard problem. And uh, look at the announcements that were done with Google and others. I mean, this is something which is happening today. So this is not the same scaling we're speaking about. This is not about having from 10 to like 100 qubits to 1,000 qubits to a million qubits. This is really about getting the solutions to the real problem that we have. But we still need to reach out with the society. We still need to reach out with the consumers. This event is one of them. Uh, this is also our role as an organization. We, uh, for example, at Quantum Data, have launched and created the Center for Quantum and Society, which is really outreaching to the rest of the society to say quantum is here, you don't need to understand quantum in order to use it the same way you don't need to understand electronics to use your iPhone, you just need to press on the button. And this is what we have to do and I think this is what the quantum industry challenge and uh, an initiative like this will do and this is why we need to do it ASAP. Thank you so much. Just one follow up from my perspective. So the, worst, wor the, the word quantum is getting used in this context to mean particularly what I call quantum information technologies, which are these new things like quantum computation, quantum sensing, right? And that is one part of the quantum landscape, right? So we started exploring this quantum landscape 100 years ago. And uh, that the, the particular things that are coming to fruition now, uh, people didn't realize until like 50 years ago. So we're doing things on decadal timescales. But the, I see these things saying, oh, like, is quantum technology coming? Quantum technology has always been here for the past decades and decades, right? So every single LED light that you see, right, we couldn't have created without quantum understanding. Right? It's a kind of a silly technology at this point, but everybody's got a light on their phone, right? A bright light on their phone. If you touch that light, it's not hot. If you talk to people 100 years ago, how do you make a light that bright that's not hot? They just say it's impossible, right? It's only because we have quantum understanding that we can do that technology. So what we need to do in this year is talk about the present and future, but also talk about all the things that surround them in their electronics that are quantum related. Everybody understands uh, DNA, right? Doesn't mean everybody's a microbiologist. But if you go out in the strip and ask people like, what is quantum, they'll give you blank looks, right? something from a Marvel movie, something like that. We need people to understand that quantum has been here, is here, has been generating all these technologies, is underlying everything at CES, and will continue to, to generate all sorts of new technologies. That's the goal of the year. We went into the cloud in 2016 at IBM. Um, 
since that time, we have had 600,000 users use our system, register and use the system, running over three trillion quantum circuits on our system. We have deployed over 70 quantum computers. We have uh, 250 organizations, um, companies, universities, research labs, national labs on our quantum network. This shows you, you know, there are, there's a, a large group of people that do in fact find utility in using these machines and expanding the boundaries with a capability equal to or better than that circuit can be run uh, by brute force classical simulation. I'd say we have hardware software applications. What's incredibly exciting is quantum networking. All of us here, we need to build the quantum internet and that is what we're actually focused on doing now as well. Where we're focused is even um, coming up a level on the algorithm and creating a co-pilot-like experience that automates the entire scientific reasoning loop. So you describe a goal and you get a solution. And you can do that without being a quantum physicist, which I am not. So many of the examples you heard here, you may say to yourself, well, I'm not in academia, I'm not a quantum physicist, but the algorithms and then the agentic framework that will interact with you trying to solve a problem and take away what you need to do across HPC, AI, and quantum for you, that's what I'm most excited about. And we're, gonna, we're going to be seeing vast improvements in that in the next year or two. Very cool, nice. All right, so I'm nice. So uh, I think there are three, three things which I see seconds, happening. Please. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, the first one is the machines are going to get more reliable, right? Higher fidelity, okay? So I think that is going to happen. You're going to have better error correction and algorithms. End of the day, you need more qubits, but at better fidelity. So I think you're going to see that happen, and you'll see a lot of progress in that in this year. The second one is in terms of applications. I explained a very important application which is probably affecting everybody on this planet. Okay? You'll see more progress in those types of applications and algorithms with a combination of CPU plus GPU plus quantum. And the third one, I think you alluded to it in terms of how quantum can help AI, especially in the data side. And you're going to see a lot of progress on that side, especially coming from us, I think, in that space. So these are three important things which are going to happen, which is really going to take quantum computing to the next level in 2025. So guys, what we saw is that there was a massive draw on the quantum space recently in the past year. And the predictions that they were saying were actually in the next year or year and a half. Companies like IBM, Quantinium, and IONQ kind of leading the charge in the presentations. The optimism, I would say, was very high. I was really happy to get those questions answered directly when I asked them a few questions. And the first time I asked a question, they didn't get answered very well. I said, what is the social and the overall world perspective and adoption look like right now? And so I'm glad we got those questions. The biggest breakthroughs are happening in biotech for sure. Batteries are a huge thing as well. One of the examples was they had a, a, a lithium battery that they were trying to optimize. They took like 25 years worth of research and they put it into this quantum computer. And there was like 3 million or 30 million data points. And basically it, the quantum computer got it down to eight options. And then they got from those eight options, they found a way to optimize the lithium ion battery to reduce or increase its efficiency by 70%. And that was basically, they had all this years of knowledge, they were able to take it and run it through a quantum computer, get a result right away. And the same thing is going to be true in biotech, like think of all the research there, there is on cancer, for example. They were talking about quantum systems accelerating peptide binding. So for example, vaccine development looks at uh, the peptides and one thing that happens, you have all these different cancers. And cancers, they have these protein peptides that don't bind together, but in order, if you figure out how to bind them together, then you can create vaccines for it, basically. And so they're saying with error correction that they achieved in this past, in the past few years, the focus 
is shifting the hardware to actually building the software solutions and that allow the businesses to solve the problems, the complex problems easy. And part of that is when you run something through a quantum computer and you get an answer, now what do you do next? Right now it exists. Uh, Microsoft executive was talking about it, that as soon as they get an answer, then it goes back through an AI, CPU, uh, GPU, back into the quantum computer again. Uh, and the AI can basically continue to solve the complex problems with the quantum computer. Now, the big opportunity definitely is that if you have a big problem here, that's going to be the best use of a quantum computer. They have this uh, challenge uh, competition that they're holding and companies are basically invited to solve really challenging problems. There are a lot of companies that are joining in, which will, if you join, your problem will be distributed to research teams that are backed by partners like Microsoft and NVIDIA. If you win, then you secure partnerships with big tech and you get recognition in 2026 at CES. So basically that's gonna provide more funding, more exposure for startups, and that's gonna to aim to significantly make an impact. So the biggest problem that they said could be up to eight years out is full scale uh, utility, getting to the point where every single business is tapping into using, or every single person that should be tapping into quantum computing is using it. I think part of why the optimism was high, you could even hear uh, them talking about IONQ doubling revenue year over year, and then projecting strong upcoming earnings, not necessarily saying we project upcoming this earnings strong, but they were saying just because there's a negative net income, because people, they talked a bit about the finance and, and on that side of things, they said that uh, they're doubling revenue and the revenue is expected to increase. It's around a hundred billion dollar industry nearing. And on top of that, if it's at its potential that they said it would be in the next few years, then that would be about a one to three trillion dollar market cap. So actually a huge, huge opportunity. So you can see rapid growth. Definitely the market looks, it looks uh, promising right now. The, the companies just pulled back massively as we saw two days ago, but I, I think that we're well uh, positioned to capitalize on the momentum. I believe there will be more momentum and I would love to see a market consolidation here, but also that we see some stabilization and in the future get to take advantage of some opportunities. If you wanna get involved even more in the quantum AI space tech and the best AI industries, then I encourage you guys to simply take a look at Stockmate down below. If you join today, you can get to see some of the opportunities in our live sessions at Market Open tomorrow. And they usually arise right in the first few minutes of the day. So check out that second link down below in the description to get started. So guys, the future, based on what I say, seeing going to this event, the future, it's not just near in the 10 to 15 or 30 years, uh, it's happening right now. So don't miss your chance to be a part of it. Make sure to be uh, staying up to date and looking for best companies. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.